Next on the news, screwing and sanding workers, restoring a piece of history that was destroyed in a hate crime. Work has begun repairing a statue that was smashed at Holy Family Church in Fresh Meadows. I'm Katie Vasquez and I'll have the details coming up. Bishop Robert Bredin celebrates the patron saint of pilgrimages by sharing a behind the scenes look at the National Eucharistic Congress. It has to be in every single classroom. The state of Oklahoma releases their guidelines for teaching the Bible. Plus, this father-son duo are brushing up on their history, cleaning headstones at a Catholic cemetery. I'm Jessica Easthope. Currents News starts right now. A Queen's Parish is now picking up the pieces, repairing a statue after it was beheaded in June. According to prosecutors, a taxi driver committed a hate crime at Holy Family Church, sending shockwaves through the pews. But as Current News' Katie Vasquez tells us, healing can now begin in the Fresh Meadows community. Put a plate inside. I'll put two plates. Screwing and sanding. Workers restored this landmark that has stood at Holy Family Church in Queens for the past 42 years. That statue has a lot of meaning to us, and uh, especially to, to decapitate the head of Jesus hurts us so much because that is our Lord and Savior. Pastor Father Sean Sukiel still remembers discovering the desecration. Surveillance video caught the man identified by prosecutors as 44-year-old Jamshai Chowdhury walking up to the Fresh Meadows Parish at 5.30 in the morning on June 30th. You can see him hitting the statue of the child Jesus, eventually knocking off its head, leaving Father Sukiel asking some hard questions. Why would someone do something like that? an attack on our faith. And Holy Family parishioners feeling lost without their iconic image. We suffer for the, you know, how the people do these things. I don't, uh, I'm not very understanding of people who do things like that. But what was lost is now being found. The company that first built the statue decades ago, called Cave Company, was brought in to repair it Thursday bringing it back to its former glory. We're using the same resin it's made out of to reinforce it. And the rod that I use is aluminum, so it, it won't rust, it, it'll last. This broken piece of parish history now made whole again. And everybody's happy that everything is all put back together. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of that. Oh, Sean will be very happy about it. Longtime parishioner Carol Ann Foley was emotional seeing the son of God standing tall again. I got chills, you know, his head is back on. We can come here and we can feel a little bit more peace. And Father Sukiel says the parish is ready to put this behind them. We definitely forget give him. Uh, we know that uh, he's a broken man and, and, and hopefully that this will be a life changing experience for him in, in, a, in a good way. The suspect was charged with criminal mischief as a hate crime as well as other related crimes. He is expected back in court on August 1st and potentially faces five to 15 years in prison if convicted. In Fresh Meadows, Katie Vasquez, Currents News. The Diocese of Brooklyn's Mother Church celebrated its namesake Thursday for the Feast of St. James. <laughs> Brooklyn Bishop Robert Brennan celebrated the Mass in downtown Brooklyn. He has a personal devotion to St. James, who is the patron saint of pilgrimages. And following the bishop's recent pilgrimage to the National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, he gave parishioners a behind-the-scenes story about Cardinal Luis Tagle, the Pope's envoy to the Congress. Now, I have a story to tell you. I have some inside information there. Cardinal Tagli was on our flight coming back to New York. He was heading to Rome and he was making a connection. He stood there for over an hour as a line of people went down Before coming to to ask him to pray with them, to offer a blessing, to greet him, to thank him. Maybe even the occasional photo, you know, that's always part of the deal. And he was so gracious, so kind. 
after mass parishioners were also able to venerate a relic of St. James. Registration has opened for schools around the Diocese of Brooklyn. The superintendent's office has started posting online just some of the dozens of Catholic academies that have already started accepting students for the 2024-2025 school year. Last year, nearly 18,000 students received a Catholic education. If you want to send your children to Catholic school, just visit catholicschoolsbq.org or call 718-965-7380 for more information. Out in Oklahoma, the State Department of Education has released guidelines for teaching the Bible. The rules were released Wednesday, requiring a physical copy of the Bible and the Ten Commandments in every classroom. Teachers must use the text as instructional support, referencing the Bible to provide historical context or discuss literary and artistic influence. The Oklahoma State Superintendent says he wants these guidelines in place by the first day of classes. These are the standards that the teachers should be teaching. So the reality is, is what we will be doing is making sure that they have the sources there available to do it. We will make sure that they've got this clear guidance in order to do it. That's where you saw this. We're going to be rolling out more um, uh, documents for teachers to use. Some school districts in Oklahoma have already said they will not follow the order. A St. Louis father and son are spending their summer brushing up on history. Literally, the duo has embarked on an unusual project, cleaning headstones at a Catholic cemetery. Take a look. No, that's the wrong edge. We have to keep going straight. A father and son are brushing up on history by brushing off the past. It's right there. Armed with brushes, scrapers, and a special cleaning solution. Oh, yeah. Zach Leonard and his 10-year-old son, Lincoln, have taken on an unusual summer project at Calvary Cemetery, a Catholic cemetery in the Archdiocese of St. Louis. I think it's important to preserve history. Does it mean if you don't, it's going to get lost, and to know your past is very important. What started as a curiosity became a calling. The Leonards came to Calvary Cemetery looking for roots, but found themselves planting seeds of remembrance. We found out that I had a great-grandfather, his great-great-grandfather, who was a veteran of World War I and World War II. That great-grandfather was James Leonard, buried somewhere in these sprawling grounds. But finding him was just the beginning. We could really only make out the A-M-E-S of the James. You couldn't really see Leonard. And we were like, we should clean this. This is heavy. <laughs> it is heavy. And so, with determination and a bit of elbow grease, father and son set out to unveil other stories etched in stone. It's coming right off, isn't it? It's really an incredible feeling because you've come there to honor someone, and it's almost like they're coming to life a little bit. I hope that he learned that acts of kindness don't require an organization or don't require donations. Even if it's something small, everything makes a difference in some way and it can affect a lot of people. In a place where time stands still, two generations are ensuring that those who came before us will always shine bright. It's easy to do really if you're just willing to take the time Calvary Cemetery has been around since 1854 and spans 470 acres with over 300,000 graves. It's the final resting place for many notable figures, including General William Tecumseh Sherman and Dred Scott. But the Leonards are restoring every headstone, celebrity status or not. And before we go, Currents News is taking a break next week. But don't worry, there's still lots of great programming. Just some of the highlights will show you the Catholics who are putting their faith into action and the best feel-good stories over the last year, plus a Eucharistic revival show. We'll be back on Monday, August 5th. That is this Currents News Update. I'm Jessica East Hope. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.